Hey, it's Chris, the Drone Geek, here with the Droning Company to do another gear check. Today's gear check is all about the Autel Evo 2 version 3. This is the latest version of the Evo 2 by Autel Robotics. I can't wait to share it with you. So like I said in the last video, about a month ago, Autel reached out to me asking if I'd be willing to review two of their drones. Now, I love the drones I've already reviewed for Autel, and I love the folks at Autel too. They're just so nice and easy to work with. So of course, my answer was yes, when do we get started? So they sent me the Autel Evo Nano Plus, which I reviewed in a previous video, actually the previous video. You can go ahead and click the link up in the corner to go ahead and check that out, especially if you're looking for more of a consumer beginner entry level drone. It is fantastic for people that are flying recreationally or just getting in to GPS drones. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more advanced, packs more of a punch and could be considered for professional and commercial grade jobs, this is the drone review you want to watch right now. The Autel Evo 2 version 3. This is the third version of Autel's Evo 2 drone. And I got to tell you, it blew me away right out of the box, which is where we're going to start with the build quality. The body on this drone, the fuselage, just feels so sturdy. I mean, listen to this. It's, I mean, it's rock solid. And I got to tell you, in the nicest way possible, it's like holding a brick in my hand. I mean, that's how hardy this drone is. And that's actually a really solid point for me. I love when a drone just feels like it's gonna be able to withstand really adverse weather conditions and might be able to take a hit or two as well. And that definitely is what this drone screams to me when I hold it in my hand. The other thing I really like, and this is sort of a build quality thing, so I'm gonna touch on it now, is listen to this. The snap and lock action of the arms when you unfold them is just so satisfying. And the arms themselves feel very durable as well. I'm not gonna keep this unfolded for the duration of the review because I only have so much frame space to work with here in the camera, but you can see what I mean with the drone's build. It's just super solid. And I really was in love with the drone as soon as I pulled it out of the rugged bundle case that Autel sent me. The only negative mark that I had against the build quality on this drone is, we're gonna talk about this guy here in just a little bit, the gimbal. Now, in terms of the materials the gimbal is made out of, no complaints. It actually feels very, very high quality. But what I don't like is when it's powered off, you can see it just like, there's no resistance in terms of keeping the gimbal sort of in a somewhat stationary space. I know it's powered off, so it can't really stay stationary, but you would hope for a little bit more resistance. When it's wobbling around like that, it makes me worried that if the gimbal cover came loose in the case, you could damage the gimbal inadvertently by carrying the case around or maybe putting it down a little too hard. Or there have been occasions where I've been on a client shoot and I need to get from one spot to another very quickly. So I'll film where I am, I'll throw the drone in the car, not actually throw it, but put it in the car, but I won't secure the gimbal, I won't fold it back up, and it's just sort of hanging there until I get to the next spot for the shoot location. And that really makes me concerned about the health of the gimbal. I don't think it'll be a huge problem, but it's definitely something to note in the build quality. Overall though, this is a solidly built drone. I love the way that it looks and feels and the materials this drone is made out of. So for that reason, this drone gets a nine out of 10 in build quality. So we started off strong with a nine out of 10 in build quality for the Autel Evo 2 version three. We're only gonna get stronger in this next category, introducing the Autel Smart Controller SE. This is the controller that Autel sent to me with the rugged bundle for the Evo 2 version three. It's perfect. This is art, this is the standard, this is the bar for smart controllers in the prosumer drone space. If you're looking for an example of what a good smart controller looks like, this is it. Ergonomically, it fits perfectly into my hands. Whether you're a pincher or a thumber when it comes to controlling your drone, it's, it's just, it's amazing the way that it fits into your hands. And let's, let's be honest, finally, somebody put a screen in the middle of the freaking controller. Why we've been toiling around with weird screen placement for the past, I don't know how many years. We got it right. It's in the middle of the controller. It's super bright. The display is amazing. It's just so vivid and you can see everything that you are flying around. It's, it's, 
like I said, it's perfect. And uh, the only complaint that I have about it is sort of a nitpick and it's the battery life. Typically you can get about three to four consecutive flights with this controller before you actually have to charge the battery itself. But you can sort of mitigate battery consumption by reducing the screen brightness when you can, and also being more efficient with the input that you give on the screen. The less you're using the touch screen, the more battery life you're gonna have conserved for actual flight time. The other thing that you can do is purchase more batteries, which this has an external battery you can slide in and out. So if you buy more batteries and just keep them charged, you can have just a rolling supply of batteries that you can use and get as much flight time as you could possibly want out of it. So for the first time in the history of these drone reviews, we have a perfect categorical score. The Autel Smart Controller SE scores a perfect 10 out of 10 in the Rugged Bundle for the Autel Evo 2 version 3. Next, we're talking about user interface, which covers anything having to do with using an application or software to control your drone. In this case, we are using the Smart Controller SE to control the Autel Evo 2 version 3, and that has onboard dedicated software to do so. Let's talk about what I didn't like first. First of all, I did not care for all of the hidden tools and menus. You have to swipe and tap a lot to find some of the things that should just be readily available on the HUD for the pilot. For instance, the map. I use the map a lot when I'm flying drones so that I can see exactly where my drone's at, even if in the rare instance I lose visual line of sight with it. I can get oriented and it helps me keep track of where everything's at and what I'm doing. You have to go through two steps, swiping and then tapping to open the map up. Super inconvenient. I also am not a huge fan of the overall layout of the whole app as well as the settings menu. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of rhyme or reason for where anything's placed and it's just sort of thrown together in my opinion. Not a great experience that way. Overall though, I did enjoy using this application and interfacing with the Autel Evo 2 version 3. It's a super fast setup. In about 30 seconds, I had the controller on, the drone on, and everything was connected. It's also really easy to get in to watch your videos and your photos and the big display on the controller makes it so very nice to preview the things that you're shooting in real time. Once you uncover the camera settings menu, it's really easy to use and I like the sliding feature on this particular menu because you can see everything you need to see without impeding your actual view of the camera feed. You can still keep an eye on what's going on around your drone while also manipulating the settings on the camera to get the perfect exposure and the perfect color grade. Plus, the intelligent flight modes are super easy to find and even easier to switch between. All in all, my experience in terms of user interface with the Autel Evo 2 version 3 was a positive one, and that's why it scored an 8 out of 10. So let, let's get right into it. What's it like to fly the Autel Evo 2 version 3? If I had to characterize it in one word, I'd say dreamy. It is an absolute dream to fly this drone. It's fast, it's nimble, it's agile, and it's rock solid in the air. This thing holds position so incredibly well. It's just a reliable piece of aerial imaging equipment, and the flight experience was top notch. Another thing I really liked about it is that the standard mode give you a very consistent, safe, and reliable experience, whereas ludicrous mode kicks it up a notch. You go from flying what is essentially a flying Cadillac into a Ferrari almost immediately when you switch to ludicrous mode. It gets so much faster, the handling is so much looser, and it's a ton of fun to fly. The only issue that I had with the flight experience on this drone is the yaw stick. Right out of the box, the yaw stick is just a little too touchy for my liking. If you're not sure what a yaw is, it's where instead of like going like this to the right or left, we call that a roll, a yaw is where you actually turn the drone like this or like this. It stays in one spot and you turn it as many degrees as you want, basically in a circle. That's your yaw. And a lot of cinematic shots, you want to do a roll combined with a slight yaw to create an orbit effect, okay? So when I would fly this drone, instead of going like this, where I have a roll, then I incorporate a little yaw, I've got a nice smooth arc around my point of interest, it would do something like this. It would start, roll, 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 and then it'd go like that. 
and that's just not going to do in a cinematic setting so did get docked a point for that but overall the flight experience on this drone like i said absolutely a dream and that's why the autel evo 2 version 3 scored a 9 out of 10 in flight experience so let's go ahead and answer the question that almost every drone pilot asks when shopping for a new drone what's the flight time like Autel markets the Evo 2 version 3 at about 40 minutes of flight time. Now, just a quick reminder, every drone manufacturer in the world, not just Autel, markets the flight time as the flight time that occurs in almost perfect conditions. You're not typically going to experience perfect conditions when flying in the real world. So take the flight time that's marketed by the company and sort of notch it down a few minutes. That's typically an indicator that they were at least trying to be honest with you. And that was the case with Autel on this drone as well. They marketed it at about 40 minutes and consistently over the course of about 20 flights, I got about 34 to 37 minutes of flight time with the Autel Evo 2 version 3. Now, the only thing I'll say that's negative about the flight time for this drone that I also said about this drone's little brother is that I wish Autel would have strived for a little bit more. A lot of other drone solutions that are similar to this guy right here are pushing 50 minutes of flight time at this point. We're only getting 34 to 37, and I say only, it's still a lot of time in the air, but I just wish they maybe would have come out with an intelligent battery, like a step up from the battery that goes in the version two of the Evo 2, maybe just created a, a higher level battery that gives a little bit more flight time. I, I don't know how you do that. I'm not an engineer in that capacity, I'm not an engineer in any capacity actually, but I just wish there would have been a little bit more flight time given on this version of the drone. But again, Autel really hit the mark with the flight time in terms of what they're marketing and the fact that 34 to 37 minutes is still a long time in the air. And for that reason, they get a nine out of 10 on flight time. So we've answered the question about flight time. Now it's time to answer arguably a more important question and that is camera performance. What does the camera do? Is it professional grade? Let's talk a little bit about the specs first. It's got a one inch CMOS sensor capable of 20 megapixels and adjustable aperture ranging from F2.8 to F11. It's capable of 6K at 30 frames per second or 4K at 60 frames per second. And the photo files on this thing are huge. Lots of flexibility in terms of detail and punching in on some of the pictures you're going to get with this drone. Fantastic on paper. What was it like in my actual experience with the Autel Evo 2 version 3? I love the large video format. 6K, lots of flexibility in post. 30 frames per second, I got a little flexibility there in terms of slowing down the footage if I need to. Plus, you can go 4K at 60 frames per second, which is super flexible as well. I also love the images that came off of this camera. Fantastic, lots of detail. I loved the normal color profiles vibrancy. It was just so vivid and bright. The only knock I'll put against that is that in the middle of the winter landscape in North Central Pennsylvania, nothing's really all that vibrant. It's very dead, it's very blah, and there's not a lot of color. It's very muted, especially when there's no snow to contrast the color of the buildings and other things in the landscape. So it would actually try to bring out vibrancy in the images that I was shooting and the videos that I was shooting that wasn't actually there. Video wasn't as bad as the actual photo camera. Photo camera seemed to really try to do this a lot, whereas video was a little less out there about it, very subtle in the way that it tried to increase the vibrancy in the normal color profile. But that's where the log profile comes in. You can switch out of the normal color profile and go to log, and that sort of makes up for the fact that the color profile on the actual camera's computer is a little bit too vibrant in some applications. Log gives you a nice flat image that you can then work with in post to make your photos and your videos look the way that you want them to look. Another thing that I want to mention is this drone's ability to perform in low light. The one inch sensor on the Evo 2 version 3 does an awesome job of picking up information in night and low light shoots. While the video turned out beautifully, I was actually particularly impressed with the low light photos this drone captured. Now I messed with the settings and was able to put together a few solid night shots of the city of Williamsport, but if you're not comfortable doing that yourself, you can always try night mode using Autel's moonlight algorithm. 
This allows you to essentially take enhanced nighttime photos by increasing the camera's ISO while also suppressing the noise that would come with an increased ISO. Now, personally, I prefer trying to expose my images manually, but night mode is certainly a great tool if you don't want to bother or if you're just unfamiliar with exposure settings on a camera. My only complaint with the camera performance on this drone is the same complaint that I had with the Nano and the light. And that is right off the camera, it's too sharp. It is just too sharp. And I know that that's slightly subjective, but there's an objective portion of this that most people can look at a photo or a video and go, it's starting to look unnaturally sharp. We didn't get into that territory with this drone. It definitely does not stray that far, but it, it comes pretty close in my opinion. And I think if Autel backed the sharpness off just a little bit in the next version of the Evo 2 or in the Evo 3 or any other drones they release in the future, they're gonna be doing themselves a lot of favors. And speaking of sharpness, I wanna clear the air on something in the last video. I was talking about the sharpness with the Nano Plus. At some point in the video, I alluded to the fact that you might be able to manipulate the sharpness in the app itself while you were connected to the Nano Plus. I apologize greatly for that misstatement. That is not true. You cannot manipulate the sharpness in the app for the Nano Plus. It's not possible. What you can do is you can take the photos and the videos that you shoot with the Nano, put them on your computer, and just about every editing software out there has the ability to manipulate the sharpness and dial it back a little bit. That's how you have to do it with the Nano Plus. With the Evo 2 version 3 though, there actually is an option and a menu in the application that you can adjust the sharpness in the drone's settings so that you don't have to do it in post-production. Now you can just keep the sharpness as is and just go with the adjustments in post. That's fine too, if you need to dial back the sharpness on the images you're getting out of the drone. But I just wanted to apologize for the statement I made in the video about the Nano Plus. That is not true. Again, I am very, very sorry. What happened was I had some crossing of some wires. I'm reviewing two different drones from the same company. So a lot of the stuff I'm seeing is very similar. And then some wires got crossed and some information from the Evo 2 version three leaked over into the Nano Plus's review. So again, very, very sorry about that. But yeah, I really had a great time with the camera performance on the Evo 2 version three. The photos, the videos, everything that came off of this thing is just such high quality. And it really is a, a complete package when it comes to a professional piece of aerial imaging equipment. Really loved the camera performance on the Autel Evo 2 version three. And for that reason, I am going to be giving it a nine out of 10. So let's talk about some of the intangibles that the Autel Evo 2 version 3 brings to the table. First and foremost, out of the things that I liked about the intangibles of this drone, the panoramas. Panoramic shooting on this drone is fantastic. I love the detail in the images and the algorithm that's in the drone that actually stitches the images you take in the panorama mode together is really fast and it does such a good job. I don't see any seaming at all in the actual images, the completed panoramas. So even if you're not a professional, you're just somebody that likes to shoot recreationally and for hobby, and you really enjoy panoramas in particular, that the performance on this drone is enough of a reason for you to consider it for your aerial imaging option. I also absolutely loved the hyperlapse mode on this drone. Is it the best hyperlapse I've ever seen? No, there are some stability issues, but overall it delivers a really smooth piece of hyperlapse footage, very dynamic and very engaging. It also has 360 degree obstacle avoidance. Now, luckily I didn't need to put that to the test in any shoots that I did for this review, but I'll tell you, looking at the number of sensors on this drone, uh, I'm pretty confident it's not gonna run into anything unless you really try to run it into something. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 obstacle avoidance sensors on it. That's a lot of coverage, 360 degrees. I don't think you're running this thing into anything unintentionally. And you know, to wrap up the positives that I saw as far as intangibles go with this drone, this one's a little bit unique to the Rugged Bundle that Autel sent me. If you purchase the Rugged Bundle with the Autel Evo 2 version 3, you get a hard case carrying case. It's waterproof and impact resistant. It is perfect for keeping your Evo 2 version 3 and all of its accessories very, very safe. 
peace of mind right here. This is an awesome hard case and uh, yet yeah, definitely worthy of the Rugged Bundle moniker. But what didn't I like about the intangibles of this drone? The gimbal cover. I don't know what it is with me and gimbal covers, but if it's not like a seamless experience, I get irrationally angry. And uh, this, this gimbal cover, unfortunately, is one of those covers that if I have to struggle for too long taking it off, I get irrationally angry. Now it came off not too bad there, but putting it back on is a different story entirely. Now I am doing this backwards. I should be doing it in the other opposite hands. And I'm also doing it while I'm recording and talking to you. So I don't have a high level of focus on this, but there you go. I got it connected. It's just, it's frustrating. It's really frustrating. I wish they would overhaul their gimbal covers and do something different because I don't know how much longer I can do that. And the other intangible that sort of left me wanting a little bit more from Autel was the battery recharge time. Now I know you can only do so much to speed that up. A lot of these more advanced batteries take a long time to charge, but man, there was no multiple battery charging hub. I had to charge these one at a time and it took each battery about an hour and 15 minutes, maybe even an hour and 20 to go from like 15% up to 100%. That was my experience. I plugged it into a wall outlet. I was using everything I thought was correct, and it just was not delivering the experience that I wanted to. So if you're looking for a drone with a quick recharge time, this one's not it. All that said though, the intangibles on this drone, the positives far outweigh the negatives. So for that reason, we're gonna give it a nine out of 10. So to recap this review, for the first time ever, on Let's Talk Drones review history, we have a perfect categorical score set by the Autel Evo 2 version 3. It scored a perfect 10 out of 10 in the controller category. It also broke the record for the highest overall score with a 9 out of 10. So I acknowledge that this drone did exceedingly well in every category. I, I tried. I tried really hard to nitpick this thing. And it's not because I don't like Autel. It's not because I want to see Autel flounder or do poorly. It's, it's not that at all. I love Autel. I love their products. I love their people. Fantastic relationship with Autel. It, it's because I had to do some very honest introspection about myself as a drone reviewer. I really started to ask some questions like, are you this easily impressed that you're giving this drone nines out of tens and one perfect 10 out of 10? Is that how easy it is to impress you? as a UAV expert or a UAV influencer? Yeah, I, I really had to ask those questions to myself. And I found at the end of all of this that there really isn't anything wrong with my views in terms of how I see some of the tech that's out there. This drone just did that well. I am blown away at how well Autel did with their Evo 2 version 3. It really is the complete package. If you are looking for a professional piece of aerial imaging equipment, look no further than the Autel Evo 2 version 3. Now be prepared, it does come at a higher price tag than some of the other options that Autel has available on their website, but you get what you pay for, and I promise you that. You shell out a little cash, you make a real investment, and you have a plan with how you're gonna use this thing, it's gonna work out for you, I promise, because the quality that comes out of this drone and the experience that you have flying it, rewarding, just all the way around, and it's definitely gonna live up to any professional standard that you might have to work within, less maybe a Hollywood experience, but even there, I'd say it could probably hang. But what do you think? Are you gonna go out and buy the Evo 2 version three, or are you gonna pass and maybe wait for something different? Do you wish there was something that you would have seen in this drone that we didn't talk about? Or is everything that you could ever want right here in this little orange package? Let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up icon down below. Helps get the video out into the algorithm in front of more viewers like you, drone enthusiasts in particular. And we always encourage you to subscribe to our channel. Make sure you hit the bell icon when you do that as well because you'll get a notification every time we post a new video. With another episode of the Gear Check with the Droning Company, I'm Chris. Have a nice day.